All right, come here. Come here. Listen, if the grandparents are in the house, you may want to have them leave right now because I'm going to say something that may stir some controversy at your house. Basting doesn't work. Basting is a waste of time. Basting costs you time. Basting dries your bird out. That's right. I said it. Forget the basting. It's time to brine. And we're doing it coming up on Culinary Nonsense. I hope I didn't start any arguments at the household there when I said basting is a waste of time. Literally. Think about basting here for a second. All right. We'll use this bird. The juices are in it. You're opening up the oven, you're taking the little bulb thing or the brush, or maybe you're using a mop, and you're taking the juice to put it where? On the skin. Meanwhile, the door's open, the oven temperature goes down, you slide it back in, now the oven has to catch back up. The whole time, it's costing you time, and it's also meaning that the more that this spins in the heat, the more it's going to dry out. The proteins are going to just wring the water right out of it, and you end up with a dry bird. That's not what you want. You want something easy? How about a brine? And it's a fine time for that brine, so let's get to it. Number one, I brought some water just shy of a boil. I just want enough to where it's going to steam. And the reason, we're going to add the simple brine ingredients. Number one, a cup of salt. This is regular kosher salt. Number two, a half cup packed of brown sugar and about two tablespoons worth of peppercorns. When it comes to brining, let your fingers do some research and you'll see that there is every flavor under the sun. This is the easiest, most simple brine. Now in that nice warm water, I'm going to stir it up until the sugar is dissolved, my salt's dissolved, and if you smell it, you can also start to smell some of the peppercorn flavor coming out, or peppercorn smell. And then, the reason I only used one cup of the salt is we're going to go with one gallon of water to two quarts of vegetable stock. Now the vegetable stock's already got its own salt in it, so that's also going to bring some flavor to it. Now with that water already boiling, if I was to add the turkey, essentially I would start boiling the turkey. So we're going to add another gallon of water, but this time we're going to do it while it's in its frozen state. That's going to help to cool down the brine, make it cool enough that we can add our turkey without parboiling it before the big roast. So I'm just going to open this up and in to our pot we go. And then you know what we're going to do? More stirring. All right, as you can hear, there's still some ice in there, which means we didn't have the water all that hot, but we don't want to put the bird into a bacteria bath. We want to keep it out of the food danger zone. So we want it to be below 40 degrees. Actually, the closer to 35, the better for the bird. About 36 degrees, and that is certainly doable here just using a, an instant read thermometer. From the pan into the very cold tub. Oh, and a couple of little tips here for the first timers when it comes to turkey. Don't forget the cavity up front here. This is sometimes where they store the gizzards and all that good stuff. Meanwhile, in the uh, big part of the cavity is where they've been hiding the uh, turkey neck nowadays. Into the brine it goes. For how long? Minimum of six hours. 12 to 24 is going to be absolutely optimum when it comes to the bird, but we have to make sure it stays cool. So what I do, I take my big pot here, I put my lid on it, and this goes into a cooler. And then with that, I fill it up with ice so the ice stays around it. That keeps the turkey out of the danger zone. 24 hours later, we're going to pull this out, we're going to rinse it, pat it dry, and then we're going to roast it. I'm going to show you how it looks here in just a minute. We've got golden skin, we've got a juicy meat, and we've got a bird here that's ready to go at your dinner table. Yes, you have to budget out a little extra time, not only to make the brine, but to let the turkey soak in the brine, six hours, 12 hours, or maybe go a whole 24. I think that when you do make a fine time for the brine, you and your guests are going to say when it comes to a brined turkey for this Thanksgiving, or maybe you do it again for Christmas, there is none better. <laughs>